Hello and welcome to the round eight review for Supercoach 2022. And we had a pretty good week, 2,347. So a top 2% score pushing us up into, ironically, the top 2%. We went up 2,060 spots in the ranking. So yeah, it was a pretty good week, a good weekend as well. How small How small of a world do we live in? So I went to a 21st birthday, a uh, mate called Liam. So yeah, happy birthday to him. And I was with there, one of my mate, like another another mate of mine, and I was walking around, and someone walks right up to me, and he goes to shake my hand. And he goes, "I haven't missed an episode all year." I'm like, "You're kidding, right? Like this is a party with about thirty people or so there." And uh, yeah, his name's Aaron. Been a big fan of the channel. I know him from Twitter and Instagram. Uh, he's been messaging me. We we discuss a little bit of Supercoach, but. Yeah, we rambled on for a good half an hour, at least at the party, just chatting Supercoach, watching the, the Essendon Hawthorne game, and yeah, it was a lot of fun, so yeah, huge shout out to him, uh, yeah, it's it's good to to be recognised again, I, I, honestly, it's happened about four or five times, I can't believe how small of a world we actually live in, so yeah, quite bizarre, but yeah, I hope you're doing well, Aaron, because yeah, that was pretty good, and we're definitely going to catch up for a beer uh, no doubt about that. So yeah, hope you're doing well, mate. But yeah, not too bad. We're going, we're going all right. So it's a bit radical this, but I'm going to activate another trade boost. I'm not mucking around here. I just want to get as many of these shitty rookies off field as possible. And because I downgraded Pruce, oh no, sorry, because I downgraded Grundy to, for Pruce relatively early before Grundy got injured. No one could predict that, but. I think I'm kind of an upgrade ahead a little bit. I mean, the only reason I sort of lost a couple of leagues is because, as I said before, Steele and Sinclair let me down big time because yeah, they pulled some really shitty scores. And Sinclair, especially being a pod, won't talk anymore. We'll get stuck straight into the team and and assess it as always coming into well, what is round nine. So very exciting. And yeah, straight away, you'll see the cheeky VC. I put a tweet up here saying I'm going for a little bit of a pod VC and, and shout out to Cliffo Supercoach. He nailed it. Uh, I think I got about 80 or 90 comments on it of people guessing who I who I VC'd. And yeah, many said short, but he was the first. So shout out to him. Unfortunately, it didn't really eventuate how I wanted it to. He was on 75 at half time. So this was a pretty good move in hindsight because... Yeah, everything was going really good, but dropped off a little bit. We've seen that a few times this year with players just struggling with that consistency throughout the game. So 109 was very disappointing from Shorty, but we just fell back on Neil, which was a pretty obvious one playing against West Coast, which was sort of why I rolled the dice on a pod captaincy. But yeah, James Sicily, he was on debut in my team this week, and what a debut it was. 132, fantastic from him. I'm happy I paid up for him because he's going to go up and an obvious uh, top six defender nonetheless. So very happy with him. Sitting comfortably at D1. Uh, Max going to go flat. I hope it doesn't during this video. That would be pretty pretty bloody ordinary. But yeah, Jack Crisp, uh, he has been pushed out of D1 by Sicily. So that's what we want to see. He's been in red hot form as well. If you rule out that pretty average score in round one, he's done really well. So I'm happy I held the faith and kept him in the team. Another one that I'm very confident will be a top six defender. And short, the man I just discussed, super disappointing, but I was happy to, to run the gauntlet with him. Uh, sometimes you just don't get him. So that's super coach. And Jack Sinclair, oh, this one was probably what hurt me the most. And as I said before, the reason that we're not in the 1% and we didn't get the 10 out of 10 league wins because short is, a, I mean, Sinclair, not short, but Sinclair is yeah, he's a pod, so... When I trade him in, he was in 5% of teams. So, yeah, he's one that you, you really want scoring well. And he's he's given me a couple of bang average scores, hasn't he? Been really disappointing the last few weeks. So, if you want to get him in, I don't see why not. He'll drop a little bit of coin. What's his break even? Just out of curiosity, 100. So, every chance to hit that. If you, if you don't have Sinclair and he works with your buyers, bring him in. I don't see the reason why he couldn't. Uh, Georgie Hewitt, really disappointing that he didn't get up and about for this round. That that does suck a little bit, but hopefully only two weeks, three max. I still hold him because he's probably D2. I'm not going to lie. He's been a superstar this year, so hopefully we get uh, Georgie Hewitt back. That would be nice. Used him as a loophole for Paddy McCartan. Uh, that's actually um, not what the team looks like. I had O'Driscoll on field instead of McCartan, so... Uh, yeah, that worked out really well. So, yeah, McCartan went off, and 
And a 94, even from Hewitt, I mean, because of the ownership, you'd take that from a premium. So, yeah, very happy with that one. Uh, SDK, super stuff. Been really good over the last couple of weeks. So, yeah, he hasn't done anything wrong. And, yeah, we'll move on to the midfield. O'Driscoll as well, quickly touch on. I want to get rid of him so bad, but who do you downgrade to? I don't want to use my last upgrade in defense because I've, I've nearly completed it, as you can see. But who do you go to? I mean... I want to hold off and just smack some midfielders in. That's that's ideal, but no rookies coming out. We've got Rory Thompson, but, yeah, I'm not really keen on him. And onto the midfielders, Neil, yeah, got tagged, I think, late, which was annoying. He started like a house on fire, just like Jane Short. You get that. It's fine. 123 is perfectly fine for Neil, and I think a lot of people would have done that. So, yeah, not in the minority there. And Clayton Oliver, probably... Probably going to be my captain this week. I uh, plays West Coast. I know Neil didn't quite go off, but yeah, they he he always dominates. So he's due. He could be one that I'd like to fall back on. But yeah, we'll wait and see. Hopefully the VC goes all right. Jack Steele really really bad here. So yeah, the reason he got seventy five. Well, he fought he fought really hard all day. You know, come off of a blood nose. Spent a little bit of time on the pine, which was a little bit. Frustrating from a super coach side of things, but keep in mind also had 10 clangers. We won't see that all the time. It was a disaster for the Saints. Melbourne's always going to be a tough game, so yeah, we can rest easy with Steel. We won't see that for the remainder of the season, I, I don't think. So yeah, 114 average is pretty pretty ordinary, and you can wait for him to drop and bring Jack Steele in your team because yeah, I promise you he's a clear top six midfielder nonetheless at least top eight so yeah he'll be fine just a bit ordinary over the over this week and if you vc mccray and held the faith well done i'm going to vc him this week and the reason for that is because he plays on the friday i'm pretty sure and then first game on saturday is a hawthorne game so i need to utilize the ned long loophole so yeah we're going to do that and i used him as well which i'll discuss that in a minute uh, Took Miller went bang, really good. Uh, what could have been score from him? I noticed that DR chucked the VC on him, so that's pretty that's pretty stiff. Another another one of these players, you got Miller, Neil, Short, these guys that just come out and go like 80 at half time and then they really drop off. They get tagged, something happens, and then they're they're scoring really deflates. So yeah, unfortunate there, but 122 is a really nice score and full credit to whoever bought him in. Uh, at his cheapest, so yeah, 118, at, or it was about 117 yeah, last week, so yeah, that'll be the lowest that we see too, Kat, so definitely a very viable upgrade target, if you don't have him in, I think you can squeeze him in for 608k, that's fine, because he's only going to go up, no doubt about that. Cripper, he's an ultimate captaincy option now, he's proved plenty, the only reason I haven't been comfortable chucking the C on him is because of that game against Gold Coast. I'm just I'm nervous that something like that's going to happen again. I really I would love to VC him, but play so many late games. It's unfortunate. It is what it is. But I'm definitely keeping him in contention. But he lit it up against the Adelaide Crows. They had no matchup for him, and he did literally whatever he wanted. So that was good. And Matty Rao, I love what he's done the last couple of weeks to keep me going. But he will be on the chopping block this week, and I will. Pretty much showcase exactly what I'm going to be doing with him later on, but he will be a part of the, the upgrades this week. And Ned Long was a really good loophole for Robbie Robbie McCombs, 73. So that was really solid. Uh, you, you're banking that. I, I wasn't really sure whether or not to bring him in. I wasn't sure on his job security, but he did really well. He's going to make some really good short-term coinage. So that's what we love to see. And the Hawthorne rookies are just... Uh, I don't really care. I don't want to talk about them. They're frustrating. They're not field options. So uh, it's just a, a whatever sort of discussion there. And on the rack, so yeah, Witsy, another one that could be a very good VC option. He has been extraordinary. I'm, I'm considering him as R2 for, for the year. So that's how good he's been. I'm super impressed with how he's tracked. And I have absolutely no intentions... Uh, trading him out for Max Gorn. And as much as I'd love to get Gorn in, I'll be doing that for Proust, who will make some more coin. Another 100 plus. Another ton. We love that. And then Hayes responded from what was a pretty ordinary week last week. So, yeah, Ruck line's really good. Plenty of value. We're going to make some money and, and we'll make some upgrades over the buyers, hopefully. We'll see how we go. But, you know, the Rucks was good, but the forward line wasn't. Yeah, really underdone. But that's okay because I'm, res I'm expecting a huge response 
from a lot of these players. So Dunkley, yeah, it's a bit unfortunate. But as I said, everybody has this pick, and Heaney, he played really bad. Had a couple of absolute shockers close in front of goal, and that just hurts you from a super coach point. But his worst is or 75 to 85. That's fine with me. He'll find some form, and it'll be and it'll be okay. And my man Will Brody, the man I started with, absolutely over the moon with how he has played. But the problem with this is 115 looks good on paper, but had 35 disposals, so I expected a little bit more from him. But yeah, against North Melbourne, that is fine. I, I think I'm going to keep him for the year. 98 average. If he can push it to 100, I think he's a really decent or worst case scenario F6 and Canelio. How long am I going to hold him for? I'm not really sure. I've got bigger fish to fry, so I'll assess it next week. And Zachy Butters, I put a tweet up. I think it was my most liked tweet I've had. I think I had about 120 something likes. So it was, is Zach Butters officially on the chopping block? And this is one of the all time unknown super coach questions because form, form has been horrific. I think four of his scores have been in the 50s. Disgusting, but. Yeah, I spoke to Aaron about this on Saturday night. As I said before, had a lot of super coach rambling, and he said to me, it made sense, but yeah, it's either fifties or one fifties from Butters. So, I think he has, a, I think he has an opportunity to go one fifty plus against North Melbourne this week. That is why I think I've decided to hold him for one more week, and we'll have a look at it. We'll have a look at it over round nine when we do our trades then. But I am concerned, but I'm not that concerned because a pretty easy run. Nonetheless, so yeah, it sucks, it hurts, he's going to drop. But at 421k, a bit like Whitfield, if you wanted to get rid of him a couple of weeks ago, who do you go to for that coin? So you're basically going to have to downgrade a rookie and then find some money to get him up to an English or a Heaney or whoever you don't have. So this is a real problem. So I think all we can do now is just hold the faith, hope that he finds some form and can be that really good breakout midfielder that we selected him to be so yeah I'm going to hold the faith with Butters and, and just see how he goes but am I confident doing that absolutely bloody not but yeah we got no choice because as I said we got bigger fish to fry so Nick Martin he is he is absolutely tearing it up one that I am more than happy holding as my last upgrade I think he's going to go well definitely going to hit 400k nonetheless and Maybe even 450. If you hold him long enough, yeah, he'll he'll do plenty. So I'm super impressed with how he's tracked and and the rookies. Oh gee, Roses was disappointing and Dixon didn't play. It's all right. So we're gonna we're gonna show our trades and it's been one of these massive speculations, a, a huge decision that I'm gonna have to make this week, and it's who do I bring in out of Brayshaw and Petrarca. Because I genuinely cannot decide, and I'm not really sure what's going on. Here we go. So at the moment, I like Petrarca. I put a poll up, and majority reckon Brayshaw. What worries me about Brayshaw is what happens when Five comes back. Does he lose some CBAs? And he has a 189 system, which is unbelievable. But it brings up his average a little bit more than it actually is, and has a few ordinary scores in there. Dropped to 70 something, I think, the other week. So I am concerned there. And got a break even of 122. Where Petrarca, he's sort of got a little bit of a, a lower break even. And he's been a little bit more consistent for me. Look, I'm not going to captain him, so it's fine. I'm happy if he just goes 100. It's just whatever. But he's his cheapest, and I think the value is just too good. And they have the same buy as well, so it doesn't matter. But at this at, at the moment, I'm really leaning towards Petrarca over Brayshaw. But yeah, comment down below because I am interested. I will read all of them, and we'll see how we go. Yeah, Matty Rowe, he's going to go. Dixon, Ward, these are all duds at the moment. Matty Rowe's been pretty solid in the last couple of weeks, but yeah, 437k is fine. He's been a good on-field option for the last seven weeks. And yeah, we're thinking Rioli, got nice DPP. The role isn't great, but then again, I don't have to field him. Really nice, just leave him on, on the bench. Going to make some short-term money. Got a couple of really good scores in the bank, so I'll discuss him a little bit more in a rookie review if I can get one of those out. It's been a hectic couple of weeks. We've been working hard and training hard and doing a fair a fair bit of stuff. So yeah, it's pretty radical sort of life got going on. So Supercoach kind of kind of loses me at times, so hence the late uploads. So I do apologize for that one. But Rioli, I'm a massive fan. I like Hamilton as well, but I don't like GWS rookies, so I'm gonna avoid him just for now. But we'll see how we go. 
and Greg Clark, hopefully he can get up. If he doesn't get up, we'll go Hamilton. But yeah, again, I'm not sure. Is he good? Is he COVID free? I don't know, but he's killing it for West Coast. Probably probably one of the best players, it has to be said. But we're going to complete these trades and I am very happy with this. So the reason I'm activating a boost is because 173k in the bank, because the rookies aren't great. So I think O'Driscoll will lose a bit of coin. If I can downgrade him next week or upgrade him one or the other, yeah, it's going to be really hard to go one up, one down and afford these primos. I want I want a Tom Stewart. I want a Brayshaw or an English, but they're going to be overs and yeah, super expensive to gain your team. And the rookie coverage, it's not like I don't have Horn Francis and Dacos anymore. So I don't have the funds to actually bring him in. So I'm doing I'm doing myself a favor here, banking some coin and then next week I can go like I don't know, we'll see maybe like McCartan down or DeConning down, I don't know, to O'Driscoll up or, yeah, it's just something we're just going to have to assess maybe. Oh, I don't, I'm not sure, but I think banking all that coin for next week's upgrades is the smarter idea and, yeah, we'll see how we go. But, yeah, let me know what you guys reckon of the review here. I'm pretty happy with how the team's rolling and as Supercoach is all about getting as many rookies off field as possible and I'm just going to do exactly that. That's why I'm activating a trade boost. I'll leave myself one more for later on the season. We'll have extra trades over the buys and yeah, I'll end it here because as you probably saw before, it's a little bit slow. Not I don't know what's going on. The internet's not too bad here but definitely some inconsistency and it can be a bit dicey even at the best of times. So yeah, I do apologize for that one as well. I'll wrap it up here, guys. I'm really happy with the team and I'm hoping that I can get a response from Sinclair. Me pod been really disappointing, but I picked him for a reason. I've got confidence and I'm backing him in, but happy with everything right now. Hope your team's going well. Hope you're moving up in the ranks. The big guns are chasing me, JD, DR, George, NO. They've all had good weeks and they're coming. So a bit nervous there, but we'll see how we go. Look after yourself, everybody. Take it easy. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.